again. Hey, today we're going to take a look at some more Teradata Aster and how we can embed it with ClickSense and how we can do really some phenomenal things beyond just running the queries themselves um, through Aster. So in this case, I've got some data that's out here. So I'm just looking at Teradata, Teradata Studio Express. And you can see my surgery events table. I've got a record ID. We consider this a customer ID, patient ID type of a field. Um, something that lets us know it's unique. So you can see this patient had two procedures. This patient had two procedures. This patient has three procedures, etc. cetera. Um, what we see for each record is some of this information is duplicated. I can see their diagnosis. This was their admitting diagnosis. Um, I can see the type of admission it was. And then I've got a code number that indicates what number of procedure that is. So this patient had these two procedures in that row. And that's that base table. Then there's, we're going to run an NPATH query that's going to pull that information together to us. But we're going to do a couple of things that I haven't demonstrated before. I'm going to pop over to Click Sense, and I'm going to show you this is my connection to Aster that's going to go through ODBC. And all I'm doing is loading those surgical events. I'm going to bring all of those events back. And then I can do some really nifty things taking advantage of what ClickSense can do through ETL. I'm going to read through there. I'm going to say, get me the record ID, which was that patient ID. And I want to get the first procedure for this patient. And I want to get the last procedure for that patient. And I'm just loading it from that memory that I've already built. I've loaded these, so now that's resident and in memory. I can read from that. I'm going to group it by the, the record ID, that patient. And I'm going to order it by the day number and the code number. So I'm getting the right series of events. Because what I want to do is I want to know the first procedure the patient had and the last procedure they had so that I can drill down into things. Then I've got a command here where I'm loading the surgery path, and I'm running just a simple MPath query that's going to go um, out to that events table and tell it to build the entire path. Give me that entire string of all of their series of events that occurred, and they don't have to be just surgeries. It could have been medications that were prescribed. Um, or other events that occurred in the history, just depending on what you want to track. And you'll see that I'm able to use my ETL, and I'm going to take that record ID that comes out of the MPATH query, and I'm going to rename that as uppercase record ID, so that it's joining my data that I've got up here. One of the other things I'm going to do within this um, uh, application is go out and load some demographic data. So I've got a whole bunch of demographics regarding these patients and I need to link these things up. It's not just a matter of viewing the path. I might want to filter based on some demographics what path I have. So that's the data that we're loading. Once that data gets loaded we can do some things. You've seen in my other videos where I can take that path and create my path of events. One of the things I could do is say, hey, show me anywhere where this procedure occurred. It might be the first procedure. It might be the second, third, fourth, fifth, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, 115th. Okay, um, so that's a little hard to track. But now when I look at, say, I want to see patients that started with that procedure. And I want to see what the flow of those patients was through the system. And that's just pure, read the data back out of the MPATH query, show me the path. But now because I've tied in the first procedure, I can limit where I'm starting. And I know that this was the first procedure in these people's um, series of events. Here the beauty is, I can tie this in with other demographics. I only want to see this for patients who had diabetes and are not smokers. And I can see what the what the effects of that are. I could do that with any of my um, demographic things. I might want to just see this for just males or just females. Um, the beauty is it's limitless. Any data that you can pull back, we can then allow you to filter for to see what the result was, see what that path is based on that. 
Even more importantly, we can do comparisons. So in this case, this sand key is going to relate to these values, whereas this sand key is going to relate to these values. So here I want to see patients that have diabetes. Down here I want to see patients that do not have diabetes. I want to see those with the BMI over 25, or I can choose the BMI under 25. And I might do the same thing down here. I see that it goes completely blank, so there weren't any. And maybe I want smokers. It could be any demographics again. It could be the physicians that were involved. Let me see what the path is when Dr. Smith conducts this procedure and how things flow versus how Dr. Jones does it. So this is what we call alternate states in Click. And yes, if you haven't seen alternate states with ClickSense, yes, that's available um, through an extension. So here the beauty is we can bring the data back, do those advanced analytics um, with Teradata Aster, reading massive volumes of data, and then allow ClickSense to visualize it but also take advantage of the other ETL that ClickSense can do so that you can load in the demographics data, the physician information, um, the things that you might want to do so that you could start doing comparisons of what the flows was. If this person does it, where do we go? If that person does it, if, the, if people have a certain BMI or diabetes or smokers or whatever your um, information may be, if it was a drug, show me people that had this particular prescription versus those that don't, those kind of things. That's the beauty of what we can do when we add ClickSense on top of Teradata Aster.